The Modern Horizon spoilers are coming hot and heavy now, so oil yourself up and get ready! <music> Greetings, owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles. We are here for the newest installment of Modern Horizon spoilers. The set review, more specifically, as we go through all these delicious cards. Now, there have been a crazy amount of cards released today. So we're actually gonna do this in two parts. We gotta break it up. So this is the morning portion you're seeing, and we will have an evening video with even more deliciousness. So make sure you come on back, cause there's at least one super ridiculous juicy card in that video that I can't wait to tell you about. I'm super excited about it, and I wanna put it in this video, but we've gotta spread it out. So we're starting out with Alpine Guide. One red, two colors for a three tree, uh, a tree tree, human scout tree folk apparently. When Alpine Guide enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a mountain card, put that card onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. Alpine Guide attacks each combat if able. When Alpine Guide leaves the battlefield, sacrifice a mountain. What, a, what an interesting card. I mean, this is obviously a snow creature. If it didn't have snow, you would wonder, wait, I'm looking at this artwork, what is the deal? Now, the fact that you get a mountain when he comes out is pretty amazing. There's not a lot of cards in red that have an effect like this, but he's also just every turn, he's trying to throw his life away. He's like one of those crazy people who wants to climb Mount Everest and then there's like a backlog and he ends up just off the side of the trail, breathing his last breath going, this was stupid. I lived my whole life being an idiot. This, this is idiot guy, that's who this is. But I mean, three mana for a three, three, that gives you a mountain. When he leaves the battlefield, sacrifice a mountain. I mean, it, it's a trade, right? It's it's definitely an interesting card. And the artwork shows clearly what is a mountaineer. Take my hand, I'll take you to the land of where we're gonna die. We gotta keep attacking, let's go, go, go. Eh, it's an all right card. It's interesting to say the least. If it's not terribly powerful, it at least is interesting. And like they say, if you can't be powerful with the ladies, at least be interesting with them. Next up, Fairy Seer. One blue for a 1-1 flyer. When it enters the battlefield, you scry two. The patterns of crossing ripples, ripples reveal the future to those who know how to read them. All right, that makes sense. A little fairy that can see the future and it does it by actually dipping its feet into the water and causing ripples in the pond and then reading them. That's a cool concept. I like this like dark blue shadowed kind of fairy with the peacock style. It looks like peacock feathers for wings where it looks like there is an eye on each wing. And that also ties into the concept of it being a seer and seeing the future. Overall, I like the flavor of this. This is a cool little fairy wizard for one mana. It's not too sh I mean, you get to scry for two. That's all right. After that, we've got Frostwalla. Frostwalla makes you think of Rootwalla or Basking Rootwalla. It's a Walla 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 day. So one green, two colors. Walla Walla Walla, y'all. One green, two colors for a two two. For a snow mana, it gets plus two plus two until end of turn. Activate this ability only once each turn. Basking Rootwalla. Basking Rootwalla. Same kind of thing. I've got a pump ability, you can only use it once. Glare from the snows, glare from the snows in the boreal expanse, hide its true size. All right. I mean, I like the artwork, honestly. You've got this white lizard with crystalline blue eyes that, that just make like, they look like they're made of ice. It's got a long snaking tongue coming out. You've got all this ice around it as it just busts out of a snowbank. Like, what's up? You're my dinner, son. I'm gonna eat you. I'm a snow lizard. Ain't snow way you're getting away from me. <laughs> Moving on, we've got, whoa God, this card's artwork is amazing. Geomancer's Gambit, one red, two colorless sorcery. Destroy target land. Its controller may search the library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle their library, draw a card. Telepathy changes minds, necromancy changes lives, but geomancy changes the world. All right. Overall, I like the flavor of this card. I like the fact that it's literally smashing like a giant, like meteor-sized mountain down onto a town. If you look, you've got this idyllic sort of nice town and all this green pastoral setting, and you've got a wizard who's smashing a meteor into it. Not only that, 
but that geomancer is floating on their own chunk of earth this own like its own little floating island i love it out above the waters where you're unassailable just so far away from the town that you're wreaking havoc on this is like dropping a nuke level effect right here this is pretty cool the card itself makes me think of old school stone rain in the one red two colors destroy target land there is that throwback controllers searching their land for a basic land card and put it on the battlefield that's similar to there's a number of different cards that have an effect like that where it's like okay i'm going to smoke one of your lands but you get a replacement i think what's what's the newest one from ixalan field of ruin it's got a field of ruin-esque kind of feel to it and you get to draw a card off it it's pretty cool I, li I like this card a lot the artwork is gorgeous i would actually enjoy having a blown up version of this art as a poster because it's really it's really 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 cool looking it's very evocative what's going on here you can see the mountain smashing down and there's just fire magic or red crackling energy all around the zone of impact dude i'm 100 percent on board with this card 100 percent. now i need a little sip of sugar water let's pretend like i'm not doing this mm. yum 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 moving on gilded light this is just a reprint from scourge not a big deal one white one colorless you gain shroud until end of turn uh the the difference in this is the original version of it i don't believe we had the term shroud back then so it would just say you can't be the target of spells or abilities it's interesting to note that on a card like this where they have to explain shroud that it actually makes the card more wordy than it was because the older version would just say you can't be the target of spells or ability cycling too but this one goes you gain shroud until end of turn and then in brackets the, the explanation whoever survives the first blow lives to land the second that logic makes sense you know weather the storm survive the storm and then go and strike back i like this artwork i like it looks like this guy's encased himself in a giant protective gem i've always enjoyed this art and it shows a spell swirling in to try and get at him and it's all white when it's coming in but it turns to a different kind of orangey color when it interacts with his protective gem barrier not too shabby it's an all right card to reprint nothing super exciting in all honesty after that we've got a reprint that i genuinely love i love Cross and tusker this thing is great on the surface, it's two green and five colors for a six five boar beast. Oh, well, I don't think it counted as a boar before. Back when they originally made it, I think it was just a beast. I think they added boar onto it. When you look at the artwork, it clearly does look like a boar, so that works for me. Now, why I like this card is actually for its cycling and cycling ability. So you can cycle it for a green and two colorless, which means discard the card and draw a card, which I like. But when you cycle it, you also get to search your library for a basic land card, reveal that card and put it into your hand and shuffle your library. So this card to me is fantastic. You can cycle it to go and get a mana and, uh, and another random card, who knows, might be like a land as well. And then later game, when you have a bunch of lands out and don't feel like cycling it, you can just put it out as a big fat boar, be like, who wants some bacon, son? Bad news, bacon's off the menu. <laughs> Next up, Magmatic Sinkhole. One red and five colors, so that's a steep casting cost, but it's got delve. So you can remove cards from your graveyard from the game, exile cards from your graveyard, to reduce it by one colorless for every card you've exiled. Magmatic Sinkhole deals five damage to target creature or player. Opening like the maw of a hellion, the earth swallowed the traveler whole. You know what? The flavor text works pretty well. It's pretty straightforward concept where it's like, hey, you know what? This is very similar to a hellion's mouth it opens up and you get swallowed. You can see someone falling into what clearly is a sinkhole. That's how I would describe that. A sinkhole with lava bursting up out of it. What a terrible way to go. To all of a sudden lose your footing and at the same time have magma, lava spraying all over you. You don't even have time to die from the fall because you get cooked before you get there. And it's, I like the fact that the artwork is dark. Like this person was traveling at night or in like it's getting close to night in the later evening. And all of a sudden out of nowhere, there's a brilliant flash as the earth opens up, spews out lava and swallows them whole. That's dope. Merit Lages or Merit Lodges, depending on how you like to say it. Merit Lages Slumber. This card. Ooh, daddy likes. One blue, one colorless. It's a legendary snow enchantment. When Merit Lodges slumber or another snow permanent enters the battlefield under your control, scry one. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control 10 or more snow permanents, sacrifice this card 
if you do, create Merit Lage, a legendary 2020 black avatar creature token with flying and indestructible. Now, Merit Lage is someone who was mentioned all the way back in Ice Age. There's a, a red enchantment. It's like Curse of Merit Lage that messes with like blue. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. But they decided to bring that concept back of Merit Lage back in Cold Snap. And that's where we got the card Dark Depths, where you see underneath the art, like under the ice, there's a Merit Lage, which is a 2020 legendary indestructible flyer. That is a really feel good moment. I love Gigantor creatures. And this makes a Gigantor smashy, smashy creature. And the fact of the matter is, you can accomplish having 10 or more snow permanents by having this and nine snow lands out. So this card actually feels like it's got some genuine strength to it. This might be enough for modern, truthfully, but it's definitely a lot of fun for just your everyday, like, let's build big creatures and smash each other style decks. I'm digging it. After that, we've got Mind Rake. One black, two colorless. It is, did I actually talk about the artwork on Merit Lage Slumber? I don't know if I did. It's, it just kind of shows, this is, this looks like Merit Lage busting up through the ice with a bunch of tentacles, looking gigantic and whatever. It's all right. The artwork's okay. I like the other Dark Depths artwork better. Mind Rake. One black, two colorless. Target player discards two card, two cards. Overload for a black and a colorless. If you do that, it will change it from target player discarding two cards to each player discards two cards. Eh. Eh. Spells of Madness often require a sacrifice of sanity. Hey, you know what? That's all right. The flavor text ties in to the overload concept where... If you're playing a big multiplayer game, you can make everybody discard, but you have to sacrifice part of your sanity too. That's cool. And the artwork is really awesome, in all honesty. You've got this guy screaming on the ground when you've got this like red energy that almost looks like a beast's claw has just ripped down and shredded reality. And in fragments of it, you can see somebody else like staring down and screaming, but only in, the, in those fragments. In the other parts of it, you don't see that individual. This is some really evocative artwork. I like it. That's cool. Like, really, that's cool. Next up, Thornado! One green, two colorless. Destroy target creature with flying. Eh, underwhelming. It's an underwhelming card, in all honesty. It's kind of like, uh, all right, we've got, we've, got, we've got something going on here. It's, uh, I don't know. I look at it and I just go, this doesn't really feel powerful enough. It feels, it feels okay, you know what I mean? Like, it feels all right, but it doesn't feel really powerful. It feels kind of very situational. I mean, but it is green, and they do this They do this with a number of effects. There are a ton of cards. Hell, there's even a green Wrath of Golod called, I believe it was called Whirlwind, and it just destroys all flying creatures. The fact that it has cycling, though, makes it more attractive. I don't normally play with green spells that, um, that destroy flying creatures unless they do something else because it feels too limited. But this, on its own, is like, okay, you can pitch me and draw another card. So it is situational, but if you're not in that situation, you can just avoid it. The artwork is very evocative, truthfully. This shows some kind of Avon caught up in a tornado made of thorns. Imagine that, just being eviscerated by, like, think about the thorns that are on roses or a briar patch. Now imagine those traveling at a high velocity in a crazy funnel, and you getting caught and just torn to shreds by that. What a what a brutal way to go. And the, the white Avon stands out really well in this artwork. It's, this artwork's very evocative, and it looks like a horrific way to have your uh, existence ended. After that, we've got Throat Seeker. One black and two colorless for a 3-2 Vampire Ninja. Vampire Ninja makes me think of, like, some, like, bee movie. You know what I mean? And I don't mean the boom bee movie about bees. I mean just some weird, like low-budget chud style movie where it's like vampire ninjas are attacking barricade the doors so what do you get you get a 3-2 vampire ninja unblocked attacking ninjas you control have lifelink i just felt a drip it must be about terrain stoneway market vendor last words it's like i just felt a drip but don't you look at it don't you look at it and see its blood buddy what what i do like the artwork with um the whole like face is covered not the whole face but like the eye part of the face is covered so we can't see what's going on he's doing that jean-claude van damme like press yourself out against two walls 
way up above people. I like that. That's a real sign of strength. And it's a nice way for a ninja to hide, just kind of like, yeah, you don't even know I'm up here until I drop on you. And I mean, does it have, uh, does it have fangs? Yeah, okay, it's got fangs. So it fits into the vampire concept. This is all right. I mean, it's funky how it gives all of your ninjas life like Does it make, does it turn all your ninjas into vampires? Is that what's going on? Eh, overall, it's a cool card for ninja deck. I like that they've made multiple cards now that actually give all, like something to all of your ninjas, making the ninja tribe a little bit stronger. A little bit more sugar water. Yum, 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 yum. Moving on. Universal Automaton. One colorless for a 1-1 one, one changeling. Within minutes, the strange device was indistinguishable from the other upon my workbench. Takasia, journal entry. What? 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 The flavor text doesn't make sense with this artwork. This artwork makes it look like it's a false man-sized automaton, but the flavor text makes it sound like it's some random object on the bench. And this is just a creature that can be, this is an artifact creature that can be all kinds of creature types. That's interesting. That's a high level magic shapeshifter when it's an artifact that's actually able to shift into different types. It's, uh, again, this, this, when I look at these purple whatever cards, I really do genuinely feel like all the changeling cards with the purple drift off effect were never meant to be changelings in the first place. And they are all repurposed. But the flavor text doesn't even make sense with the, the card, honestly. This card is is a mess. This card is an absolute mess to me. I'm not I'm not impressed by the execution of this card. While I am impressed with the concept of an artifact shapeshifter with changeling. After that, we've got unsettled mariner. One white and one blue for a two two changeling. Again with that purple effect. That I I genuinely feel like these were originally meant to be fading. Fading creatures or something similar to that. Vanishing, fading. That's how I feel. So, a 2 2 changeling. Whenever you are a permanent you control becomes a target of a spell or ability your opponent controls, counter that spell or ability unless its controller pays one. Wow. Wow. This is powerful. This is a really solid card. The Call of the Sea shapes many souls. I like that flavor text. It doesn't fit well. Is he wearing a is he wearing a thong? Is is he wearing a vest and a thong with the goofiest face I've ever seen? Is he literally going like this while wearing a thong? I, uh, uh, no, I don't think he should be called the Unsettled Mariner. I think he should be called Unsettling Mariner. I don't know if that's a net that he's holding or if he's just holding it in front of his thong like he's trying to lead you on like a bull. Yeah, yeah, like, whoo, yikes. Uh, <laughs> powerful card, but put some pants on, pal. Moving on, we've got Watcher for tomorrow. One blue, one colorless for a two one with hideaway. Hideaway are from the old hideaway lands. There was like uh, Shell Dock, Isle, and some other ones. They did one for each color. And the hideaway ability is when when the creature enters, uh, not sorry, when the, it was lands before. When the card enters the battlefield, you look at the top four cards of your deck and put one card under it, essentially exiled. And then there would be a way to access the card that was hidden away under it. In this case, it's a bit weird because it doesn't feel so much like the hideaway lands because when Watch It For Tomorrow leaves the battlefield, you get the exiled card into your owner's hand. It honestly feels, this feels very much like an Ugin token made by the War of the Spark version of Ugin, doesn't it? Because Ugin makes a 2-2 counter, no, sorry, not a 2-2 counter, a 2-2 token creature that you exile a card under and when that token goes away, you get the card. And that this doesn't really feel like, uh, it doesn't, the hideaway feels weird on this. But I mean, in terms of the flavor of the card, Watcher for Tomorrow, uh, you look at it, you got a 2-1 human wizard. The artwork is awesome. His staff looks really cool with the little beads hanging down off of it. He's got in front of him. It's almost like he plans to play it like a flute or something, but you have the eyes floating around his head like he's watching for the future. I enjoy this. The flavor of this is pretty cool, even if the hideaway part doesn't really strike the right chord for me. Overall, seems seems like a perfectly serviceable card. I mean, it's two mana for a two one that will net you, like will replace itself when it goes with the best card off the top four of your deck. So it's not, a, it's definitely not a bad card. It's just the hideaway feels weird. There's, there's something going on with Modern Horizons where certain things fit properly and certain things feel weird. But either way, it's a nice nod to the past. 
I do like this this like kind of in the the darkened aspect of the wizard with eyes that look like they're made of smoke hovering around making a crown above his head while he holds his staff in a very like mystical pose. It works for me. I dig it. Now, as I said, my friends, this is a two parter. Also, since this video is a little shorter than some of the other ones, we're able to include another six color of magic. So let's do that now. Hey, 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 what is going on? Magic the Gathering fans. Oh, gotta put a stop. Also, a big hello to Mr. Mike Hatcher himself. We are going to blow this guy's pants off. Wait, what? We are, go <laughs> we are going to destroy this guy in this match. And assuming, I'm gonna full control here because for some reason this game is not, okay. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah! Uh. Blue. Blue, blue, red, blue, resolve, this, 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 oh yes, we are going for a great big explosion, for a great big awesome channel, like the Magic Historians channel, for example, come on, I'm trying to do this quickly, I'm terrible at this, one more, Oh yeah! This is this is gonna be like epic combo breaker, Super Saiyan five million. I don't even know what I'm saying. Um. So the whole point of this is to get a crap ton of mana. Add it up: 22, 25, 25 and 6, 31 minus 4 is 27. 27. Dip. 27. 27. Yeah. Boop. And you can draw all the cards. Come on, come on, come on. Yes, submit. Boop. Yes. <gasps> and remember, together, we are the six color of magic. It's nice to have six color of magic clips to put in the videos. It's enjoyable. It's I appreciate those of you who sent them in. Anybody who wants to feel free. We're still doing that. Just how it works now is we only use them once so they don't keep getting repeated, which is why you don't see them at the end of every single video. So now what do we do? We roll the golden scroll. These are the people who have my back on Patreon or through channel memberships. Genuinely appreciate you supporting the channel. Thank you very much for that, my friends. To all of you, I say thank you for being here. Come back later today for part two, because for now, I'm history, baby.